Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at isotopes. So let's get started. It starts here by saying that atoms of a particular element contain the same number of protons. It then tells us here what isotopes are. And we say that isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. So the example we're going to look at is carbon-12 versus carbon-14. These are two isotopes of the same element, which is carbon, but they've got different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. It then says here that a particular isotope can be identified by its mass number and atomic number. So these are two new terms that we can use to describe an isotope. So if we were to write down the element symbol where this X is, then the little number that's a superscript towards the left-hand side of the element would be called the mass number, and we give that the symbol A, and then the atomic number appears where the subscript is, this lower number. And if we use the periodic table that's on your data sheet, then we would be able to write down the elements with their mass number and their atomic number. So what actually are the mass number and atomic number? Well, we say that the mass number, which has the symbol capital A, gives the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. That is, we can say the atomic number A is equal to Z, which is the number of protons in the nucleus, plus capital N, which is the number of neutrons in the nucleus. And that means we can say the atomic number Z gives the number of protons in the nucleus. So we have that the mass number A is the total number of protons and neutrons, whereas the atomic number Z is the number of protons only. And so if we're just adding the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus to find the mass number, then that means that we can actually rearrange this to find the number of neutrons, which you could be asked to do in a question. So it says here to find the number of neutrons N in the nucleus, we can write N is equal to A minus Z. And that's just from rearranging this. So if we want N on its own here, we can subtract Z from both sides, and we end up with this here n equals a minus z. So if we know the mass number a and the atomic number z, then we can find the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. And here's a bit more detail about our example of carbon-12 versus carbon-14. So it says here, for example, carbon-12 and carbon-14 are two isotopes of the element carbon, as they have different numbers of neutrons and therefore different atomic numbers. And remember we said that atoms of a particular element, like carbon, will have the same number of protons in the nucleus. So here you can see that carbon-12 contains six protons, but carbon-14 also contains six protons. And that's because these are atoms of the same element. But we wouldn't have isotopes here if they didn't have different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. So you can see that carbon-12 has six neutrons, whereas carbon-14 has eight neutrons. And then the number of electrons is the same as well. So we have six electrons for carbon-12 and six electrons for carbon-14. So in fact, the number of protons and electrons are the same for both isotopes here. It's just the number of neutrons that are different. So we could describe this isotope using the symbol C for the element carbon, and then we can see that its mass number A would be 12, and its atomic number Z is 6. And remember the atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus, which is 6, and the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So we need to add up the 6 and the 6 there to get 12, which is the mass number here for this isotope. Whereas for carbon-14, again we can describe it with the element symbol C, and the 6 here is the atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus, which we're told is 6 here. And remember the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, so we just need to add up the 6 and the 8 there to get 14. So by using this structure here, we're able to describe and identify different isotopes. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.